alive and alert on the north side of the dirt. It is your man, D-Real, coming at you with another B-Real with D-Real, where edutainment is what I do. Five is going to be the last one. I'm going to put it all together in a nice, neat bow. What am I talking about? Y'all saw the title of the video. So now we're going to get off into that last one. Thunderbolt time. Yep, yep, yep. Now, before we get off into that and finish off this little story arc that I've been doing, I need y'all to do what you always do for me. Comment, like, subscribe, and share the Be Real with D-Real page so that when new material comes out, you get it. If you're digging, what a brother shoveling. Put some dirt in my bucket, comment, like, subscribe, and share the page. Okay, now, why are these videos necessary? I've been telling you in the last couple of videos why they're necessary. 2024, um, Marvel will be dropping a Thunderbolts movie. So I need you to see the history of the Thunderbolts. So much in America, we want to convolute and, you know, make things different in, in this country and forget about the origins of where things came from. Literature is no different. Comics are no different. We want to alter and revise the origins to make it fit our narrative or to carve our own legend. But I'm here to show you where the Thunderbolts came from, who they are, and why they do what they do, and how they differ so much from what you will probably be seeing on the screen next year. Let's get into it. Incredible Hulk number 449 was the introduction of the Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts? Okay. Yeah. The Thunderbolts. Let's take a look-see. This is the Peter David and Mike Diodato run on Hulk, one I loved. Um, that one in Dale Keown, Kewen. Great, great, great Hulk from the 90s. But here's a missile smacking the crap out of Hulk, them tumbling through the air. His lady friend in tow is trying to make amends. But she's rescued by who is that? Mach 1 and everything's under control? He caught her. I guess so. But she don't appreciate the save. Oh, land smack dab in the middle of a rodeo. And the horse bucks the guy off. But Hulk ain't tripping. Hulk like, what's up? People telling Hulk to surrender. Ooh. Ooh, tell Hulk to surrender. The Thunderbolts. My, look at that. There's a group of them. Hulk raised his hands up. Is he surrendering? They put a cage on Hulk. Is he still surrendering? They want Hulk to lower his arms. Hulk just looking. She's trying to get him to lower his arm. Hulk won't lower his arms. But is that what's really important right now? And so a dilemma's a dilemma. So what you gonna do? 
this guy looks smart, but he don't seem to be figuring anything out. They all are just like, we're going to wait for Citizen V, who, meanwhile, Songbird, Songbird is maintaining her field, or her cage, rather. And Hulk waits because he can. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Citizen V. Showing up in true, brave, if not foolhardy leader fashion. Rocking the strangest outfit I've ever seen. And Hulk still ain't saying nothing to him. He was waiting for everybody to get in one place. And he's trying that thunderclap against a sonic pillow. How do we think that turned out? Mach 1 and Techno with their respective attacks. Well, one misses the hole. But the other does not. And drops him. This is the power of the Thunderbolts. That doesn't work, huh? Okay. And they are pressing their attack. He's wondering how they were able to hurt him. And indeed, he is hurt. Bleeding green blood. And at that moment, they're closing in. But his lady friend shows up. She is a descendant of Rick Jones, by the way. And starts attacking meteorites. And Mach 1. And suddenly, the Hulk has backup. And Hulk sees she's in danger. And that's all Hulk needs to see. The Thunderbolts are about to get their asses kicked. And that's sad, too, because this is their premiere. And there are Atlas and Techno standing in his way. Atlas, if you didn't notice, grows in height like another superhuman being. Hmm. Techno uses gadgets to fix the situation. And clearly, this is going to go bad for somebody. I won't say I told you so. <laughs> it's going badly for both of them. Long story short, to end this battle, the Hulk decides, rather than to beat them to death, I'm just going to break this here down. And if they're the heroes that they claim to be, they'll save these people as opposed to trying to stop me. That's a very smart strategy for a Hulk. And they choose to save people as that fits in with their agenda. As it fits in their agenda. As it fits in their agenda. Meanwhile, Songbird does her job to keep the dam plugged. And Meteorite is wondering about the Hulk. While Citizen B tells her she's got to learn to prioritize. And that was the premiere of the Thunderbolts. But what did they go on to do? 
Get their own comic book. Justice like lightning. Here is the Thunderbolts. Issue number one, April of 1997. We're looking and we're seeing a kind of vibe. We're seeing a kind of look, a kind of energy. All shall be revealed very soon. And it's a double size issue. So we ain't going to dawdle. As you may have noticed, this is during the time of onslaught. So the heroes we know and love currently aren't around because Franklin Richards put them in a pocket universe. Justice like lightning. A lot of stuff going on. But we want to get to the meat and potatoes, ladies and gentlemen. Onslaught was a terrible thing, but Kurt Busiek and Mark Bagley didn't bring us here for this. And here they talk about the masters of evil, a virtual battalion of super criminals who are currently at large, as is Baron Zima. And look, here's Citizen V. He is looking out for Nine, well, not nine one, but bodies that are left in the wreckage of the onslaught situation because there are people trying to rob. And citizen, citizen V is letting them know he's making a citizen's arrest. I like the not so detailed details in his face. Well, they look like they have big guns that do cool stuff. So let's watch it happen. But not before Citizen V makes his anime facial expression and, 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 and shows them the swag and bravado that he is. And he didn't come alone. The Thunderbolts are about to kick henchmen ass. But not before they give a good fight. Not hurting go, I mean Atlas. And Songbird is agile enough to dodge what's going on. And Meteorite Mach 1 and Techno swing. Into action when I swing, but just jump. And Citizen V is with him. Long story short, they do the hero thing. Oh no, dirty villain stuff. Shoot him in the back. And there's Meteorite handling the situation. Now they got the Rat Pack on the ropes and the leader tries to escape. Citizen V is on it. And Rat Pack got an escape plan. Wow. Word? <laughs> And Atlas is going to shrink down and follow. Or at least he thought. Doggone it. They got away. For now. They're introducing themselves to the press now. And he's telling people that he is the grandson of the original Citizen V from World War II. Nobody has any way of verifying that, so they accept it as true. Techno, a mental technopath. Got it. Mach 1, who combines maneuverability with shattering firepower. Songbird, we know what she does. Atlas grows big. He's the muscle, the tank. And, of course, there's Meteorite, who burns and strikes as hard as her namesake. And the media is eating it up. 
Are they here to replace the Avengers in FF? Well, apparently, it, it sounds like a very interesting plan, coincidentally, doesn't it? And the public seems very accepting of the Thunderbolts. Wow, look at that. They are quite happy with their immediate acceptance. And it seems like the, 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 the public at large is desperate for some heroes to accept and some heroes to represent them that they accept these guys. And why wouldn't they? They have no reason not to. And they present well. And duty calls like it does for heroes. And they're out. After dealing with the likes of the Wrecking Crew, Yeah, look at them go against the Wrecking Crew, who are no pushovers. And while taking on the Wrecking Crew, they're still able to do heroic stuff. Bulldozer. Being taken out by Mach 1 and saving Songbird because she's doing heroic stuff. Ouchie. Not the wrecker. Wrecker gets wrecked by Atlas. Uh oh, somebody sneaking Atlas. Thunderball. Hey, that's a James Bond movie. Ouch. Dang, didn't know he was capable of of, of making an, a giant go airborne. Hmm, put some respect on Thunderball's name. And they are catching it, ain't they? The Wrecking Crew ain't no pushovers. Oh, no, they've destroyed a national monument. Wow. They wrecked the Statue of Liberty? Oh, wow. So now they have a moment that rallies everybody to their side, to their cause. Wow. Hmm. You'd think it was staged. A tragedy to be overcome. Interesting. What will the Thunderbolts do? The, the Wrecking Crew looks real smug. And they laugh because they think they've won until, wow, Mach 1 comes with some very precise shooting. Hmm. Non-lethal. Interesting. And then Songbird does her thing. Oh, goodness. How precise. And how effective. But what about Bulldozer? His mouth is willed is shut. Which might be kind of worse in a way. Because Goliath's back. I mean, Atlas is back. And he looks pissed. Or at least his eyeball looks pissed. And his mouth. Ouch. And he's gone. <laughs> so, long story short, the Thunderbolts 
participate in fixing the Statue of Liberty and it's covered on the news and people are buying Thunderbolt buttons and ties and t-shirts and Spider-Man even gives them the spider endorsement. And the new warriors say, the more the merrier. And the Black Widow doesn't really have an opinion. But who are these Thunderbolts? Citizen V. Oh, goodness. Look at his face. Not a pretty sight. But we open an old cupboard to see the boots with the fur and the shoulders with the fur that are indicative that this misshapen man is indeed Da 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 da. Helmut Zemo, thirteenth Baron and leader of the Masters of Evil. Da 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 da. And the Thunderbolts are from left to right. The Fixer, aka Techno. The Beetle, aka Mach One. Screaming Mimi, a.k.a. Songbird. Goliath, yeah, I, I told it. A.k.a. Atlas. And Moonstone, a.k.a. Meteorite. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the dark secret of the Thunderbolts. So, y'all tell me, would it be a better story to take known villains and turn them into heroes? Or take anti-heroes and turn them into heroes? Or take characters that have never ever worked together for the most part and make them into heroes? I think this is a pretty substantial argument for why such material should be respected. But I'm just a dude who makes videos. Well, that's it for now, y'all. I'll be coming at y'all with another one of them other ones. And until I do, yo, y'all be good. Be good to each other.